Oh, here we go, son. This is what I'm talking about right here. Mike. Oh, wow. <laughs> you see what I'm telling you, Oh, man, son? that's a nice one. You see what I'm telling you? <laughs> look at that fish. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> in the bushes, <laughs> in the bushes. That's a good little fish for Roosevelt. We just got started. He's a chunk. We just got started. Look at that. Look at that chunk. Look at that. And he got it good. That wacky Cinco right by that bush. Right by that bush. Look at that. Huh? Folks, Roosevelt Lake. Today we're at Roosevelt Lake with Mike Pesco, right? That's it. Dude, right. it is so nice to have you on my show today. He's a fan of the show. How long have you been watching the show? Oh, six, seven years for awesome, sure. Awesome, awesome. I called him and I said, hey, he wanted to do a trip. And I'm like, how would you like to come on the show? He says, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. You're a Canyon Lake it. fisherman, right? Yeah. And uh, we wanted to go to Canyon Lake. Canyon Lake just hasn't been itself lately, right? You fish it yeah. all the time. Yeah, it's... But, uh, you fish the way I love to fish. He fishes this wacky stuff, the wacky Cinco's, the uh, things like that. It's a lot Nico of fun. Rigs, yeah. Nico rigs. Now you were explaining to me that you actually have a rod that you can do what three different techniques on because you have a 16 foot aluminum boat you go out in. Yeah. So I don't have a lot of deck space. And oh. So uh, I only can carry like three rods. So I have to make them versatile. Uh huh. So I can uh, use different techniques on just one rod. And that's a good thing to learn, especially for folks that don't have 20 rods on their deck or, you know, 20 rods to their repertoire. Yeah. So you have to you have to find a rod that'll pretty much be versatile and meet a few different needs, right? Correct. And so what do you throw on that rod? Well, the one I can throw a uh, wacky rig Cinco. OK. Then just by switching a hook, I can throw the regular, uh, you know, Nico rig. Gotcha. OK. And then I've got a little contraption where I have a little underspin. Look at this underspin he throws. That is incredible. And, and you made all, that up, right? Yeah, you, it's all Nico rigged. So uh, all it takes is just you know, one snap rig. And so I can have three different techniques with one rod. And you've been very successful with that over the years. I have. That's awesome. It's, it's pretty good. Well, you know we're going to have fun today here at Roosevelt, right? Oh, We figured is... out one thing. They're in the bushes. They're up shallow. You know, I mean, we're we're gonna we're gonna hit some some brush piles, and a lot of times, what I have hooked up today is the wacky rig, and I have the weedless Cinco on. And here's the reason why, and you can see how I have this hooked up. As the sun comes up, these fish will try to bury a little bit more into the trees. So when we get to these trees, I might find myself, if they're not coming out alongside the tree, trying to throw this in the middle of the tree. So I'll flicker it out there just right in the middle of the tree or something like that and we'll get them out that way. I am throwing a four inch Cinco, which, <clears throat> you know, I heard the fishing was tough. So when I'm throwing this particular rig, if they're really that finicky, I like a four inch. And that way when it falls down there, it falls weightless. And it's the most natural presentation you can offer a bass. The water's relatively clear. So hopefully we'll catch them that way and we'll catch some fish. And it's good to have you on the show. We wanted to have you out for your birthday, and happy birthday, by the way. Oh, thank you. But here's what's the next best thing. It's my birthday today, <laughs> so we're having a good time birthday, anyway. Boys. That's right, son. We'll get it done. All right, let's have some fun. You know, I've explained this a lot over the years, and, and, and it, it's really true. I find it to be really true a lot of times. You know, fish fight, and they compete for their food. So a lot of times, if you get bit, and your line starts taking off sideways out of a bush like that, a lot of times there might be another fish in there because he wants to keep the food, the, what's in his mouth, away from the other fish. So if you get bumped in there and it just sits there, then a lot of times it's probably just a one, one fish, you know? But if you see your line taken off, in other words, you pick up and your line's over here, a lot of times he's running from, more, from other fish so they don't get what's in his mouth, you know? Because yeah. they'll compete, man. You get him? You got one? You got one, son, look at that. <laughs> Mike, get him in here. Get him in here, man. <laughs> look at you go. Was that on that wacky? Yeah. All right, all right, you little, got him. Uh, little four inch wacky rig. They like that wacky rig, don't they? Look at that, you got him good. You got him good. Oh! Oh yeah, he got it good. He's He got it in his gullet, look at that. 
But look at that. What kind of bait are you throwing? What is that? That's just a little uh, four inch, uh, I think it's the um, stickos or whatever, the, whatever they From call Bass it. From Bass Pro Shop. That's an awesome little bait. Yeah. We've caught a lot of fish on it. And it comes right out. Okay, go ahead, there you go. Look at that. And with this solid little piece, it doesn't hurt the gills at all. Pulled it right out, the fish is fine. I'll let you release it. Great job. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did he hit it hard? No, he just kind of drifted with it. That's why I Well, you I, were awful quiet when you set the hook. I didn't hear no <laughs> excitement. Well, I wasn't quite sure. I, I thought I had the stick up at first, so. Nice fish, nice. Good start, good start. Thank you, baby. That's been about, about five, 10 minutes after we caught the last fish, folks. So we're, on, we're you, just kind of easing going, our way down the bank. Go. Easing our way down the bank. And you know what, here's the deal. We talked about this. The fishing itself uh, in the fall can be really wide open a lot of times. We're not seeing them bust shad up against the wall. We saw a lot of fish. I saw a lot of fishermen yesterday that were out here that were out deep fishing. I went out there, thought maybe I could get on some spoons, things like, it's a little early for that. The water temperature is still between 60, 65 in that, in that temperature range. These fish will still be up shallow. They'll get up in those bushes, they'll wait for the shad to come by and they'll get them. But it's a, it's a different kind of deal. They're still somewhat shallow, which makes it fun. And the water's somewhat clear. We're in Mid Lake area, you know, around Windy Hill. So we're, you did good. Hey, the birthday boys, <laughs> we're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, sir. <laughs> All right. Picked it up and set it down. Maybe he didn't. <laughs> oh, there you go, son. <laughs> Mike, we got us another fish. Well, let me get right off that point. Line out of your way here. Right oh, off man. that point. He's not a giant, but it's a nice fish anyway. Still a lot of fun. These would all be keepers in a tournament, guaranteed. Guaranteed. Look at that. Right off that, right off that brush pile right there. They're there, they're there. Wait. That wacky Cinco right now is working pretty good on the outside of the bushes. As the day comes up and the sun level comes higher, they'll probably be a lot thicker in it. That's where we'll have to throw that Texas rigged one maybe. You know, right in the middle yeah. of them. But yeah, good fish right there, man. That's how it's done. You know, I see that you're using a bright line. And one of the reasons I, you know, I tell people all the time, I like this Nanofill white line on my reel uh -huh. and on this art reel is because I can see the line. I lay it on top of the water. And a lot of times what happens is your bait's falling real slow and you know this, you're watching your line. It's like bobber fishing, right? So the line actually ticks and just starts taking off sometimes. And you're like, oh, or your bait will be falling and all of a sudden it starts moving faster than it should. Cause you know it's weightless. You're like, hey, wait a minute here. I got a fish <laughs> on, you know? So that makes it a lot of fun. There's another one. There's another one, son. Come out of the water. Get out of the bushes. Get out of the bushes. Get out of the bushes. <laughs> oh, I got him wrapped up in the bush. I got him. I got him. He's coming out now. <laughs> oh, that's a little bit better fish, son. Oh, that is. That's a little bit better fish. <laughs> Mike. They're eating that thing. They're eating it. They're eating it. Oh, oh he swallowed it. Look at that. He swallowed it. Yeah, I'll have fun getting that one out. Got it. That is a great tool. The problem is I gotta get it back up through his gill there. Mm -hmm. So I'll just clip it right there. We'll bring the line through and he's he's good to go. Now, can I have my O-ring back? <laughs> <laughs> Give me my whole ring. Oh, thank you, you buddy. <laughs> there you go. I want my whole ring back. <laughs> All right, buddy. You're good to go another day. People think this is a springtime technique, and I think that's one of the reasons that I didn't see a lot of people doing it in the tournament yesterday here. I didn't fish the tournament, but um, there was a lot of people that had a tough go yesterday trying to catch fish. And, man, this is kind of a spring technique, but it's working for the fall right now. Normally we would be using shad stuff to catch these fish, but it's weird bite this year. We figured it out though. Let's get back out there and get another one. I get asked a lot folks about 
why I like to throw the spinning outfit, especially in the trees, why not throw a big, you know, heavy, heavy rig, you know, like the bait casters. I will if I can get away with a big Cinco, you know, a bigger Cinco, but using a four inch Cinco when the bite's not that good anyway, and you're trying to, to throw something kind of light in there so they'll eat it, a lot of times the only way to really cast it efficiently is with the uh, spinning outfit. But in saying that, you can, uh, throw some heavier braid line on this because you're throwing braid which comes through the the guys like you know real easy and you can go up to 12 pound or even 14 if you want and throw up in there and you don't have to throw a medium action rod you can throw a heavy rod if you're really getting the thick stuff and you can still flick the bait out there real easy so you know having something really light like this on the end of your rod you know like this little four inch Cinco that we're throwing, it's better if you use the spinning outfit for sure. Uh-oh, got him, got him. That's not a big one, but it's a fish. <laughs> He's like a good one. It's a little bit bigger. Look at that. Right out of that bush right there. He swam out with it. He swam out with it, Mike. Oh, and you got a lip, lip, right I, in the lip, so that's yeah, great. Yeah, he, that was good. That's where you want to hook them. If you can hook a fish with it with one of these, then that's where you want to hook them. I can't hardly get my little my little hook out of him. Got it good. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Look at that. He's pretty. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, son. It's your turn now. Okay. You got to catch one. I tossed right into the middle of those bushes. Remember, I told you. I hope I don't yeah. get hung. So he was kind of swimming around in that area. Yeah, throw out there and, and get him. You know, when I'm throwing the five inch, you're throwing what, the four inch? Or did no, you tie on the five on inch? Now. Yeah. yeah. All right. I swapped it with the. Uh... And the one thing I'm also doing too is we've come, I'm trying to hit the outside of the bushes and then maybe we can throw on the inside. But right now, it seems like they're on the, the more of the out, outer bushes. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Out where they have the drop off. I was kind of letting it sit there and dragging it. You get him? Yeah. You got him? Yeah. Or you got Come a on. stick? Oh. Is he in the stick? There oh, you go. got him. There you got him, goes. son. You got a good one. You got a good one. Easy does it. <laughs> Mike, you did it. You got right in that bush, didn't you? Yeah. I, I threw it right on. on the edge and it had a, OK, he's a coming. Come on. Come on. Nice, nice. There you are. That was almost a double. You caught that one right after I caught that last one. Oh, did you see the crawdad he just spit out? Okay, he just spit out a crawdad. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's gone. I shouldn't have grabbed your line. <laughs> did you see? Did he really? That was looked like a stick. <laughs> <laughs> you had him hooked right in the top of the lip, but he spit a crawdad out. You couldn't see it on film, but... He actually literally spit a crawdad up as he was coming up. So they're eating crawdad. Okay. So that tells us a little bit. All right. That was a nice little fish you had on there. Normally well, I'd rib you and go, I didn't see nothing. Well, I think the first three pounder we missed. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh yeah, now it's gonna get bigger. That's right. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing really important to remember when you're fishing a lot of these brush piles like we're fishing here, is a lot of times a lot of people like to overhand cast or sidearm. If you've got a long cast, that's one thing, but when you're, when you're up short like this, you need to learn how to flip these baits out there and, and get a little bit accuracy with them. Now, one thing that helps is when I flip out there and I think I'm gonna go too far, I'm actually using my finger on the spool to slow down the bait. And you can really learn how to do that really good to where you can actually flip it out there and stop it with your finger just right here. And when you do that, it'll help you be a lot more accurate in flipping your, pitching your bait out there with a spinning rod. You'll have a lot of fun doing that. Try it, you'll catch a lot more fish. Fish got him? Yeah. You got, oh, you got a good one, son. You got a good one. Hang, hang oh, tough. He was right by that Hang little... tough, Mike, you got him. That's a good fish. That might be big fish of the day, son. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, he's nice. a little guy. But... Nice, nice. That's what we needed right there. Oh, he swallowed it. Yeah, he's... He swallowed it. You got him. Oh, you got him. 
Get over here, dude. What was he inside that? I don't want to touch your line this time and lose the fish. You got to bring him out a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, where is he? I don't see him. How long is that leader? Man, <laughs> he's feisty. Well, I got wet twice now. Let's see if I can get him in. <laughs> They're eating crawdads. He ate oh, it. Oh, man. He <laughs> just sucked go. that in. Great job. Good catch, man. That's the deal, as we came right back out working our way towards the point. And that's the second fish you caught doing that. That's a nice little bass. It's a keeper. Yeah. So far, all the fish we've caught have been keepers. That's a good thing. Thank you, Once in guy. a while, you'll run across that big one. He was on that little two stick up thing. Yeah, just three little stick ups. Three little stick ups, and he was there, huh? Out of all the stuff that was denser, he picked that one. Good job. Birthday boy. There we go. The birthday boys are doing it. <laughs> There's one there. There's one there. He was in that tree. <laughs> Oh, he's running out here. <laughs> there you go, Mike. Oh, a nice one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, there you go. Uh, <laughs> they're still in them trees. <laughs> Catch our last minute fish. <laughs> All right, you're done. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh! I had to let it sink a little farther in that little deeper water, but we caught it. But I, I ended up throwing right in the middle of the thick of that bush. They're getting thicker in there with the straight Cinco, you know, the just the uh, Texas rig Cinco, weedless. And we caught him. They're just in there in that, in the thick stuff there. I'll tell you what, what a day we have had on Roosevelt Lake. Did you have fun today? Oh man. <laughs> Couldn't now ask you know for a, how we do it, son. Couldn't ask for a prettier day. <laughs> no, Mike, That's great. Thank you. Great job. Thanks for coming on the show. Keep watching. Your grandkids are going to love this, huh? Yes, they you will. You got how many grandkids? How many great grandkids? Uh, seven grandkids and uh, five greats. Wish them all a great day. I'll tell you what, your grandpa's a great fisherman. We've had a great time today. And I, I thank you again for watching the show. And thanks for coming to Roosevelt Lake. And, uh, My pleasure. Man, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Uh, it was just, just fantastic. We didn't catch any real big giant fish, but we caught some fish and we had fun. We're getting off the lake at noon, folks. So we got here at what, 7.30, 8 o'clock? Yeah. And uh, we've had a great time. Caught quite a few little fish and uh, we're ready to get off and have some fun just in time to go watch some football. So <laughs> 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 we'll see what happens. Mike, thanks again. Hey, thanks for joining us on the show. We'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. <laughs>